Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are you happy today? Yes. In our devotional, we are talking about how to be healthy. And this is the series about our health. And of course, we connect it with the spiritual lessons. Now, uh, yesterday, we talked about uh, the laws of health. Why God has given us instruction to follow the laws of health? It's because He loves us very much. And now we will revisit uh, our friends, the germs. I know that you are so acquainted with microorganisms, but let's remind ourselves about germs around us. The first question is, why do we get sick? It's a review. Why do we get sick? Yesterday, we talked about lifestyle diseases. It's because of the malfunctions of some organs. Why? Because our lifestyle is not conducive for the maintenance of health. And then, the second reason why people get sick because of the microorganisms around us. And we categorize this illness as infectious diseases. So remember the two kind, the two types of illness. We have the lifestyle diseases, and we have infectious diseases. Now, when you say infectious, the positive organisms could be germs, and this is a general term, germs. Do you know that billions of germs that populate our microscopic world? Germs are found all over the world. In all kinds of places, the four major types of germs are... What are the major types of germs? Review. We have bacteria. We have viruses. We have fungi and protozoa. So these are the four major microorganisms around us. And these germs can invade plants, animals, and people. And sometimes they make us sick. Okay? Now let's try to look. Uh, to revisit some of these germs mentioned. Very common, we have bacteria. Bacteria, and what are the illness that caused by bacteria? So many, and I know that you have studied it. An example of sickness caused by bacteria, for example, if you have pneumonia, although not all pneumonia is caused by bacteria, but basically, we have bacteria to cause infection in our lungs, pneumonia. How about tuberculosis? Tuberculosis is caused by bacteria. How about when your tonsils are inflamed? What's the positive organism? It's usually bacterial infection. And when your appendix got inflamed and we call it uh, appendicitis so you know with connotation of inflammation we have the T's in the, in the end part so appendicitis so these are just the sample of bacterial infection and so many other illness <coughs> you know it's so amazing that when you look how bacteria could multiply, you'll be amazed. And again, I'd like to say, you know, we are alive because of God's protection and God's mercy. Although not all bacteria are harmful, they are very helpful to us. That's why our topic is our, our friends, the germs. I look at one book telling us how this bacteria could multiply so fast. In fact, one bacterium 
can have baby bacteria every 20 minutes. And in 20 more minutes, that baby bacteria will be grown up and have their children in their own just for 20 minutes. And in 24 hours, one bacteria having one million family. So, so it's amazing. That's why. Why we have some intervention special with the control of the proof of bacteria that may could harm us. Okay? And today, with the invention of antibiotics, this is helpful. Only antibiotics could be used specially when it is sure that it is a bacterial infection. So antibiotics can kill. So that's the bacteria. How about another microorganism? We call it virus. Virus is small and simple intercomposition. Can you mention some of the examples of viral infection? Okay, nurses, what are some of the examples of viral infection? Can you mention one, two, three? Huh? Okay, if you break COVID-19. What else? The common illness that caused by virus. Flu, flu, cold. So diseases caused by, vi by viruses, we have measles. So it's a viral infection. We have a rabies and a common cold. It's actually viral infection. Chicken pox, mumps, hepatitis B, A and C, AIDS, and dengue fever. They are all viral infection. And of course, you know very well that antibiotics could not be of help. That's why when you have dengue fever, you don't use antibiotic except when there are some secondary infection, bacterial infection. Then, the least common, we have the protozoa, very small ones, sealed animals, and some form of the illness caused by, by protozoa. Can you mention one? Okay. Uh, very common is malaria, we have some amoebic dysentery, and many others. Then we have the fungi. They are minute plants, must live on something alive. So, when, when fungi live in a human body, they can cause uncomfortable diseases. We have some sample. For example, you have ringworm, thrush, and other species. Okay, so those are a review of germs or microorganisms that may cause us problem in our health. Again, I'd like to repeat that not all these microorganisms are harmful. They become harmful to us when they are in a wrong place. And bacteria, actually there are some friendly bacteria in our body and we need it in our, in our stomach, in our digestive system, we need bacteria. But that the same friendly bacteria, when, when, it, come, when it goes to uh, not its own place, then it could cause us problem. The question is, how can we protect ourselves from these diseases? How can we protect? So again, the simple principle, even with the lifestyle diseases, we can protect ourselves from this illness, from the infection, when first, okay, it's a review, it, you make your, your body, your strong body defenses. It's amazing that we have built-in protection. God created us with immune system. And, you know, I came across all the article in the Reader's Digest, the body is still the hero. In fact, antibiotics, the doctors, they are just helping. But overall, the healing is coming from our body itself. So, we can help that by making strong our body defenses. Are you acquainted with the instruction so simple, but you know it could prevent 
so many problems in our health, especially related to microorganisms. How about the importance of hand washing? Hand washing. <coughs> During the COVID-19, it's very, it's uh, being emphasized of the importance of hand washing. Why is it that hand washing is very important, very crucial? You know, when you are in the surgical department, it's always repeated. Why? Because our hands are the very good vehicle of the transmission of microorganisms. Because we touch so many things. We touch doorknob and other things. So, how can we protect ourselves with this microorganism? Make strong your body defenses and realize of the importance of hand washing. It's common called a common in our in our vicinity today. Yes. You know, you can protect yourself by always washing your hands. You now during our elementary time, that it was always emphasized. Wash your hands before eating. Sometimes we just I just ignored it. I only now realize of the importance of that very simple instruction. Then, how about, and the first thing is that you make strong your body defenses. When you look, we could really say that there is really God, that we are not coming from monkey. Why? Because when you study, when you study the intricate functions of our body, in fact, even the blinking of your eyes, it's something to note that there is really God who created us. Just by a split second. You know, when somebody touches you, you could feel the kind of touch. Whether the one touching you is uh, so caring for you or hate you. You can, see, you can feel the difference. And when a, a little object will come near to your eyes, you blink your eyes. Just by a milli, millisecond. So amazing. And even when you try to look at the body defenses, you will be amazed that God, that there is really God in our body. Let's have a little review of some of our body defenses. We have here the skin. So we are covered with skin. And in fact, when you try to examine the, the, the skin, you could find some microorganisms. But we are protected as long as the skin is intact. So, this big organ, the skin, is giving us protection. You, 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 you slice a little, now when we are wounded, just few minutes, after few minutes, or an hour, and then the microorganism could invade, that could enter through the opening of the skin. And then the inflammation, the inflammation actually is again the effort of the body to fight. And so we have here the, the mechanical protection of our body. We have the skin, we have the hair filters. You look at the neighbor, your neighbor, especially in the nose trees. What could you find? Hair. So God has given us hair. Actually, it's not just by accident. It's a filter for the air that we are breathing. And even in the strategic area where bacteria just love to attack or to dwell, God has put hair. Bas ilong may hair. Asapat. We have in our armpit. Mga moist and dark area. God has put hair. Asa pang ibang location? Oh, sa ulo, there is a armpit na naay hair. So, you know that God has uh, given us that kind of protection. You have the normal mucus. We have the air walks. And in fact, coughing is God's protection. Cough is not an illness. Cough is body protection. So when there is something foreign in our system, especially in the airways, then the body could react by coughing. And mucus is also a protection. Then we have the chemical barriers. 
we have the lysozyme we have the hydrochloric acid saturating barriers in the blood stream we call it antibodies so we have ample protection that God has given us so how to protect ourselves from illness especially infectious diseases make your body protection strong take care of your body how to stay well in spite of the presence of germs strength of our immune system defense number of microorganisms virulent microorganisms we have ample in fact even in the saliva you know here is uh, when you examine our saliva we examine the nostrils we have so many microorganisms that could not uh, make you survive but you know with the even saliva there are some enzyme micro lysozyme that could protect you and this study that a quick shower in the morning you have shower this morning a quick shower this morning could make our our enzyme here strong for to fight microorganisms so it's important a quick shower i have two guys no sa dorm i have two guys kay sobra matatog now okay so how to make our body strong obey the laws of health the same as the lifestyle diseases keep natural barriers intact become immune you have some immunization it's being promoted during the covid 19 we have the active and the passive immunization and why do we say that germs are our friends in our title if they cause infectious diseases why you say that germs are our friends uh, ladies and gentlemen 90 percent of germs actually are friendly only 10 percent could hassle us and that person could only hassle us especially if it is in the wrong location our our lungs is not the right place for for microorganisms so when they enter in that location then you have problem you may have pneumonia and the place in our stomach there are some bacteria and you know when you drink antibiotics sometimes you have some problem why because antibiotic will not detect the good bacteria and the bad bacteria okay so good food production prevent the, uh, the diarrhea in the stomach and the good lord created germs for our own good amen, amen. i could i believe that even creation during the time of creation uh, microorganisms are created by god and when god created all these things he declared it is and very good only one thing that he said is not very good it is not good for a man to be alone but all creation be declared as very good but when sin entered the world it created problems so those microorganisms were created for our own good but you know they become harmful because of the entrance of sin and what is sin sin is rebellion against god separation from him and joining with satan that's a very simple definition of sin and that rebellion against god become a uh, invention in our behavior of disobeying the laws of god so sin is a relationship problem separation from the source of life first john 3 4 whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness sin as a result of your rebellion and disconnection with god will result to disobeying the laws of god and that's why in the bible the plain definition of sin again sin is the transgression of the law is your relationship with god is intact do you long to be connected with god i hope that you really uh, make a decision to connect with god because when you rebel against god it will be manifested by disobedience to the law of god so sin is not because you disobey the disobeying is only the result of the relationship problem and let's have a little review of the law of god shall we read it together ready begin other gods before me you shall not make yourself a car image any likeness of anything you shall not take the name of the lord your god in vain 
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall covet, you shall not covet, no? you shall forget the name. You shall not covet thy neighbor's house. You shall not covet thy neighbor's wife. So, that's the plain instruction. And you know, when you trust Christian, the root cause is rebellion against God. Distrust in God. It's only manifested in disobeying God. So when you don't keep the Sabbath holy, it's a manifestation that you really don't believe the instruction of God. Okay? So, according to John 5, 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. James chapter 2, verse 10, for whoever shall keep the whole law, yet stumble in one point, is guilty of all. Sin brings death to humanity, as a little poison can spoil the whole barrel of water. So Adam's sin has affected the whole humanity, and that's the problem that we have today. So the friendly germs became unfriendly, many of them, because of our frustration, because of our disconnection from God. And this is a challenge for us. Make a decision to relate yourself to God. And you know, when God is so close to you, you just delight to obey. You are happy in the presence of God. It's not a burden to keep the instruction of God because that is good for you. Don't rebel against God. Because sin, God does not want us to sin. Why? Because sin is a very miserable thing. Sin could pose death. Sin could give you problem. Sometimes you enjoy for a few minutes the effect of sin, but the overall, it will damage you. And the same with germs. So, I hope that this is a very good reminder. This is very important. There is warning already. It's very important. Why? Because, you know, when your, your connection with God is intact, what you are requesting is easy to be given because there's no barrier between you and your God. So I hope that part of what, you, what happened to you when you came here for review, that you become in love with God and that love manifested in obedience to His will. Shall we kneel for prayer? <coughs> Father God, thank you very much for the good reminder that you care for us. In fact, when we examine our body, we are so amazed of the intricate functions of our body, which is giving us the message that we have you as our God who created us. And you don't want us to be miserable. That's why we, you ask us to closely connect with you all the days of our life. And today, again, we'd like to verbalize a request that these young people will receive the desire of their hearts. And above all, let them learn, Lord, to stay connected with you. I pray for the blessing and your care for them today. I pray for the review. I pray for our wisdom. And I pray and request our desire of our hearts that they all pass the exam. In Jesus' name we pray. So special number one. Special number one.